Hello and welcome. The topic of the day is New World Order was designed to fail, inciting a revolt, manipulating a revolution. This subject may be new to many of you. Through my research, I have come to the conclusion that this New World Order totalitarian government was being set up or quite possibly was created to fail. I'm going to try my best to explain. To understand this video, you will need to have a decent understanding of this New World Order and also have basic knowledge of Alex Jones, Bohemian Grove, and the Wake Up Movement. One question that had been on my mind for a very long time is, why was the book 1984 and A Brave New World required reading for so many people? Keep in mind that both Huxley and Orwell were both part of the Fabian Society. These people didn't just happen to write these books just to warn or wake up the people. These books were written for a specific reason and I believe was to paint a clear and definite picture of what this New World Order totalitarian government is, to create the ultimate boogeyman. These are both very strong and powerful books that leave a permanent vision deeply embedded into the minds of the readers. I can understand hinting of what's going to happen in the future if you have that knowledge, but if you have a goal of where you want to take the world, the last thing you want to do is make so many people aware of it. So why was this book required reading for many in school for over 40 years? As time passes, more and more books and movies including Fahrenheit 451, Brazil, and many others clearly showing an overwhelmingly controlling government dictating everything to the mind-controlled populace, a future not desired by anyone who watches it. I believe that all of this is to give people a clear view of what the Orwellian state is, not to help people or wake people up, but to create the ultimate boogeyman, to create and manipulate a rebellion when this controlling government begins to appear. So now that we have this clear view of what this Orwellian state is, people are later exposed to the rebellion. Star Wars is just one set of movies among many books and movies, but it is a perfect example with this reoccurring theme. The Rebels and the Empire are two main sides. So before this New World Order totalitarian government really begins to show itself, people are presented with very clearly defined ideas of the Dark Empire, the bad guys, and the Light Rebellion, the good guys. The children who have read these books in school and watched these movies have now grown up. People are able to look at their government and notice more and more corruption and controls coming over them, now more than ever. Those who have read these books about this totalitarian government have their implanted idea of exactly where it is going and do not like it. And now the New World Order comes into view. This idea had been around for a long time, but it was first strongly brought into view by Bush Sr. in his September 11, 1990 speech to the Congress. However, it has since been brought up again and again by many people. People can see more and more powers combining with various abbreviations like the UN and the EU, etc. On the side of the empire is the mainstream mind frame. These are the people, still the masses, that are what I like to think of as stuck in the mainstream mind templates. These are the people with the extremely conditioned minds who still follow the left-right paradigm, who believe that all they need to do is get the right leader or president to make everything all better. Keep in mind that people need to be divided, adhering to the rules of divide and conquer. These are the people who are oblivious to the changes going on, just don't care, or just can't think outside of their box realities. But more importantly, these are the people of the Empire. In comes the alternative media, largely including YouTube and alternative radio. There are many in this alternative media, but I'm going to mainly focus on Alex Jones since he has become such a leading voice of the rebels. The alternative mainstream brings out a lot of information about the controlling elite and their plans. Don't get me wrong, I am not defending these elite, but what I am saying is that these puppeteers who control and dictate to the elite are allowing and in fact purposely exposing at least in part who their puppets are. In other words, the true rulers are hanging their puppets out to dry. What the alternative media doesn't explain is that the same hidden hand controlling the mainstream is also controlling the alternative mainstream as well. This is why many people in the elite are being exposed by people like Alex Jones and Project Camelot, Jesse Ventura, etc. This is why groups such as the Bilderberg Group, Trilateral Commission, and the CFR, the Secret Societies, and Bohemian Grove have gotten so much exposure. On July 15, 2000, Alex Jones captured footage from the Bohemian Grove during one of their ceremonies. He claimed that he just walked in. When I saw this interview between him and David Gergen, something struck me as odd. I'll play this clip for you. David Gergen, top presidential advisor to Ford, Reagan, George Herbert Walker Bush, and Bill Clinton. We couldn't believe our luck. 
It just so happens that David Gergen is also a prominent member of the Bohemian Grove, the offshoot of Skull and Bones. This insider of insiders, a staple of the White House for 22 years, got very upset when we brought up Bohemian Grove to him. One last question. I read a Washington Times article many years ago where you had a comment about the organization, and then now it's been in the Wall Street Journal, it's been in a lot of different newspapers, and that's the Bohemian Grove. And back in, what was it, 19... Uh, 96 when you joined uh, as a Clinton advisor they were the Republicans were criticizing you oh what about Bohemian Grove and then you counter uh, and then you countered them by saying hey I don't run around in the woods naked what did that mean here is the before mentioned Washington Times article where he said I didn't run around naked like they do I, I don't I don't know what I don't know what quote you're referring to I'm not aware of any quote like that uh, listen uh, I am uh, uh, a happy member of the Bohemian Grove. I like the, uh, the folks who come there, and uh, it's really inappropriate for me to uh, talk about a uh, uh, the group beyond that. Thank you. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's, uh, that uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. But there's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't we deserve to know? You, you took an, I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? You, you, I'm sorry, you took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there, too, doesn't it? No, they put yes, them up after. Oh, I'm I sorry. Just I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what, I what the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was not that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> When Alex Jones said he just walked into Bohemian Grove, Gergen mentioned that he knew what the circumstances are. You can't just walk in. I believe that this man is in the correct. Alex Jones didn't just walk in, he was let in. He was given a pass to partially expose these people to further the agenda of those behind the elite to stronger solidify the two sides. The side of the good, the rebels, the truthers, the 9-11 truth movement, the alternative media, and the side of the bad. The mainstream, the politicians, the people who appear to control the show, and the mainstream media. If you want to create a rebellion, you have to get people mad, very mad. Now you can't do it all at once since you need to keep the masses on your side. You have to do it slowly, with nothing too extravagant. So you release things to the mainstream media, one at a time. Everything that's gotten media attention is designed to do exactly this, from the TSA to the oil spill to the power plant explosion in Japan to the corrupt politicians showing their wieners. I believe it's all designed to fuel the rebellion with enough people to where it can revolt, and yet keeping enough people in the empire to be the defending force. I'm going to show how far they have gone, so hold on to your hats. I saw this video some time ago and didn't know what to think about it. This shows a comparison to George Bush debating for his 2004 election to George Bush 10 years prior. You may find this surprising, but 10 years ago, George Bush was a good debater. Listen for yourself. He doesn't pause or stumble over big words or complicated sentences. To answer your question, what Texas ought to do is determine what the mission is in the state perspective. I think that the mission in education ought to be excellence in literature, math, science, and social science. If school districts want to enrich beyond that, more power to them. But at the state perspective, we ought to hone in on four subject matters and see if we can do it right. We ought to determine the cost per pupil necessary to achieve excellence in the classroom, and we ought to fund it. The funding priority of the state of Texas ought to be the school children of our state, and it has not been under the past four years. The state share of education has decreased to 44 percent. That is why we have property taxes on the rise in nearly every single school district in the state of Texas. Define the mission, 
determine the cost per pupil necessary to achieve the goal, and elect a governor who's willing to say that the number one funding priority of our state will be the school children of Texas. That was George Bush in a debate without notes 10 years ago. Compare that to this more recent example. Actually, we've increased uh, funding for, um, uh, for um, dealing with nuclear proliferation, about 35% since I've been the president. Uh, secondly, uh, we've set up what's called the, well, first of all, I agree with the, my opponent that the biggest threat facing this country is uh, weapons of mass destruction in the hands of a terrorist network. And that's why we've put proliferation as the, one of the centerpieces of a multi-pronged strategy to make the country safer. Um, so how can you go from a decent speaker to a bumbling idiot? What if that was exactly what Bush was supposed to be? Remember that presidents are not elected, they are chosen. The election process is to give people the illusion that they have a say in what goes on in the world. So why would they choose a person that is absolutely hated for eight years? During those eight years, you could hardly turn on the TV without seeing somebody making fun of the president for being an idiot or stupid or warmonger, religious nut, or whatever he was being called at the time. I believe all of this was for who comes next. In walks Obama. Here we have a person that seems unlike Bush in every way. He is praised like a god and the masses of people fall in line to almost worship the man. Almost every news program praises him unlike anyone beforehand. He speaks of doing things like ending war but speaking in vague terms so the masses of people believe he will bring them their innermost desires. But nothing happens. Obama doesn't fix anything, only makes things worse. But this was all by design. It's one big setup to get people mad. The higher they climb, the harder they fall. There is no way they could build up a man like this only to have him become one of them and not be expecting a bunch of angry people and possibly a revolt or revolution. You can't do this alone. Who's gonna help me? You? So far you've all done a bang-up job. Then help us. Fight with us. Fight with you? Or join the team? Be an X-Man? Who the hell do you think you are? You're a mutant. The whole world out there is full of people that hate and fear you, and you're wasting your time trying to protect them? I got better things to do. You know Magneto's right. There's a war coming. Are you sure you're on the right side? At least I've chosen a side. So now that the people are starting to get angry and begin to distrust their government, it's time to give them their controlled leaders to follow in order to take them in the direction that is appropriate. There's lots of people who are out there, but there's Ron Paul, Mike Gravel, Jesse Ventura, and Glenn Beck, just to name a few. I'd like to show how well this is planned out. We have our two main sides, but it's not that easy, because things are more divided than this. This is where the Tea Party ears, People's Militia, and other similar groups and movements come in. All of these groups are sort of warring with each other. For example, the Tea Partiers do not mesh with the 9-11 truthers, and the Alex Jones followers do not mesh with the Glenn Beck followers. All the while, if you watch the fake Republican news, you hear this whole wake-up movement being called left-wing loons. If you hear the fake Democratic reporting on this, you usually hear the same groups being called right-wing extremists. So you can now see that all these created, manipulated sides are all warring with each other. A classic case of divide and conquer. So to sum up this video, from the required reading in school and the many movies of this evil controlling government, from all these controlled wake-up movements and the alternative mainstream making the force against the government, from all these things coming out into the mainstream that seem to be designed to make people angry, from all these created movements and figureheads behind them, I have come to the conclusion that this is all by design and that everything is going to plan, that more and more revolts and possibly revolutions are coming and have been designed to come. In addition, ask yourself, why has the internet been allowed to become such a big realm of information? Why is YouTube being allowed to bring out so much information? Things like this don't just happen. These things were allowed to happen. The question is by who and why. But this is all just one part of the plan because eventually the true forces, the puppeteers working behind the scenes, are planning to expose themselves. This I will get into in another video. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, illuminated day.